Wir sind privat. Menja Zavut Christian Heimes. That's all the Russian I know. <laughs> Mostly. Hi. So, uh, this is a talk about profiling and tracing on a low level, even much, much lower than Python. So, we're going to dig into your operating system kernel, even into your CPU and memory manager. Yeah. So, this talk uh, was inspired by an issue I faced many years ago at work where something was broken. Our production system was blocked every five minutes. We had a very, very hard time figuring out what was going wrong. Of course, the uh, DevOps and admins first blamed Python. It turned out it was a rather strange bug regarding send virtualization, Redis, forking, and virtualized memory management unique. So we took like several days to figure that out. And I will show you some tools that will help you to get that done. Also, you can do very, very low-level profiling. I will show you why like, almost 40% of just doing request.get uh, HTTPS is wasting on something that you can avoid. And that's not easy to figure out by normal profiling tools because there's lots of C code involved. Also, with profiling and tracing, you can even a bit more. So you can use it for one to optimize your code, and you can debug code, and you can do something else I will show you. It's really cool. So, uh, just skip that. Hi, I'm Christian. I'm from Hamburg, working on Python, working on security engine for Red Hat. So, what you're going to learn here during this talk is not like a deep dive in any of the tooling, rather a shallow dive to show you which kind of different tools are available and how to use them a bit and maybe which tool you select for different jobs because there are some tools that are easy to use for specific tasks, other tools require like privileges or more knowledge to use, or give you way too many informations. So um, this is also talk useful for any kind of doing backend development or DevOps, maybe even useful to some of you doing uh, numerics, uh, number crunching, data science to get very low level to optimize your algorithms. It's Linux only, so you can't use this tool that will show on any other platform than Linux mostly except for the first tool I'm going to show you that works on some other uh, Unix platforms. And it's also much example-driven. And I'll show you... Okay. Again, this talk won't, don't you, won't make you an expert, and not an expert either. I'm a user. So this talk will going to show you some of the tools for some of the things you can do, and that's not even all the tools that are available. So it's a big diagram. Don't, you can't read that, but it doesn't matter. So. First, I'm going to introduce you some basic uh, um, concepts to define some words, so we have a common uh, understanding. Uh, then I'm going to explain ptrace, user level uh, tracing, and later on we're going to deep dive into kernel tracing and hardware tracing. Uh, we'll sum up some things, and we hopefully have five minutes left over for question and answers. So, um, so I'll say that uh, the most important person to remember is Brendan Gregg from Netflix. Uh, he's the guru of profiling. So. Introduction. So some common terminology. Uh, debugging. Debugging is literally the process of identifying any kind of issues in your program. It's usually something you have to actively modify code and often makes the code very slow. So you can't like debug with PDB or GDB on your production system. With tracing, you can observe what your um, processes are doing that is often much faster and not intrusive. So it may slow down your server a bit, uh, but you don't see everything. And just profiling is often just a byproduct. So if you trace and take like sampling, take like timings, you get some kind of information that helps you to uh, like uh, understand performance issues or uh, memory issues in your program. Uh, methodology, so there are different kinds, levels of tracing. There's application level tracing, like debug builds, you can like sys-trace, you can do uh, slow query lock. I'm not going to talk about that during my talk. Um, you get deeper, you can do something by uh, injecting code in your uh, runtime processes, like with ptrace, modify the kernel a bit. You can do deeper by writing kernel programs or modifying your kernel during runtime, or even executing code you write inside the kernel space, which is really cool, also really scary. And finally, hardware tracing uh, is you can look what your uh, CPU is doing. Lots of CPUs have special features to let you profile their behavior. Uh, for one thing, mostly you need to install extra packages. 
for lower level debugging, you need to have extra privileges. Um, you often maybe have to compile your programs uh, if you're running C code in a special way because some optimization will remove profiling information. You have to disable like secure boot, which is also a bit scary. And even more scary, you often live patch code into your kernel, which makes it very fast and very scary too. Um, so statistics, something you need to know. I'm not an expert on that, but they're like lies, them lies, and statistics, or the German term for that is the mist, mist, mist. So who measures, measures animal excrements. <laughs> it's a German word, very colorful. So to understand like benchmarking statistics, uh, you, you sh first should familiarize yourself with different terms, like what's average mean and standard deviation, uh, different kind of errors you can have, like observational errors, you can have system bias, you maybe have wrong idea about something. Misleading representations like Vatican City had about 2.27 per square square kilometer, which is a true value, but totally nonsense. Um, there are different other errors, so often high performance um, profilers don't take, measure everything at once, it takes snapshots, and if you do the snapshot on the wrong time, you may be just missing information. And you can actually do something very wrong, um, producing wrong data. So this is a, um, a paper I recommend if you want to go deeper on that. Computers are also very noisy, so that's my laptop for one second doing nothing actually doing a lot, although it's doing nothing. There are very strange side effects. We had something in C Python a while ago, we tried to optimize something, and we didn't understand, because if you run that inside normal environment, you get like very fast code. If you run it in the virtual environment, you do many, many, many more memory allocations. Turns out if you go with a certain amount of threshold regarding environment variables, so long paths in your end bars, things turn out to be much more interesting. So, that was the basic things. Let's start with the first tool. It's called Ptrace. Ptrace is a very old system call. Uh, on the Unix times, it's used for use GDB. If you use strace, ltrace, or C code coverage, you mostly use uh, Ptrace syscalls. And there are different libraries that utilize this uh, Ptrace syscall. Uh, one is library tracer. You can actually see which kind of function calls you're calling. That's what GDB, for example, uses. So I library trace Python call doing requests, and I can see which functions are called starting with SSL CTX star. So I'm working on the SSL model, and I often have to debug like SSL issues, and this is very useful for that. Uh, you can also count like memory allocations, so how often you allocate free or increase uh, memory. Um, you know, example, I uh, I'll trace the malloc free and realloc functions for a process. So I have two windows here. Um, do something like doing a request, and then get like uh, how many times I allocate free memory. That thing has an issue. It turns out to slow down your process a lot. So without L trace, it's like half a second to do that over and over and over. And over. Uh, with L trace, it's, well, several times slower which is not statistical and good for if you do like production level tracing. Another tool is uh, strace, uh, uh, made by uh, Paul Kranberg. Uh, the logo is an ostrich, which doesn't make sense in the English language, but in the Dutch language or German language, uh, it's called uh, Strauss, or Strauss, which is the way how you uh, pronounce strace, a fun fact. Um, it doesn't load. So what you do with strace is you debug and uh, follow system calls. System calls is a user space program, like Python, can't directly talk to hardware. To doing a syscall means you talk to the kernel and ask the kernel to do something for you, like create a file, open a file, transmit data over the network. And this strace tool lets you uh, follow up what's going on in the kernel doing syscall. There should be a diagram that doesn't load, but I don't know why. Whatever. Okay. Um, for example, you want to understand uh, which kind of files your program opens. You need just a very simple cat call, cat a file in the file system, and see how many files is going to be opening. Should be at least one. Well, it turns out, uh, no. 
because strays uh, doesn't call like C function, it calls system calls, and there are different system calls for different tasks, and often multiple system calls do similar things. And recently, uh, a couple of years ago, the glibc changed from doing, instead open, doing open AT, which is the new variant of open to kind of a bit more. So there are ways to do like work expression to work around that if you want to do tracing, but that gets more complicated if you do like stat. So stat gives you information about a file like last modification timestamp or size, and that can be lots of different kind of stat, even depending on your platform, CPU, and architecture. That's why um, Strace has like a family of uh, uh, different calls. So you can have a percent or a double percent gives you some aliases. Okay, let's do it again. Let's trace uh, the OpenAT call. You see it's going to open a couple of files. You often see it loading LD, SoCache, and libc, and some locales. Uh, these are just standard linked libraries linked into your C programs, and yeah. You can also do something like trace uh, any call for a uh, file. So now I'm tracing anything that does something with Etsy OS-release. And you see first doing openAT uh, or something, it returns number three, that's a file descriptor. And from there, it first stats, advertises something, then reads the file into memory, uh, reads a bit more, and finally closes that. So you can just see which kind of operation you're doing on a file, on a network socket, et cetera, et cetera. Several options are a cool tool, like the filter classes, there is uh, different arguments. Uh, these are the most important, there are many, many more. You can also do fun stuff like debugging, seeing what kind of issues you face, like uh, doing HTTPS doesn't work because you get a cert validation, and you can see, okay, it's trying to load a certificate uh, file from the file system with the root CAs, very useful for that, or doing like network activity, what happens when you do an, a request. First thing you always do is resolve the host name, so we do a DNS request first, See if inet socket dgram, so that's a UDP socket on port 43, and it will resolve www.python.org into an IP address. So that's what the kernel does uh, on the wire. Uh, and then you do like a normal network connection. So that's a TCP connection to port 443, that's HTTPS. And you get the rest. So another cool thing is that's the additional half use case for those who do testing, you can also tamper, modify, and change how uh, the kernel behaves with S-Trace. So in that case, I'm saying any kind of socket open call will result in an error calling EM file. So do that, okay, you saw the first request for the DNS resolving request, and just the lookup returns, well, name unknown, because it can't do DNS. You can also do like, only do the second and more calls, and then it will fail to do the TCP stocking open call. So connecting to the web server will fail with the too many open files. Or you, something else, you want to slow down like copying process. So you're doing like a DD from dev zero to dev null, uh, and I want to slow that down. You can just say, okay, anytime I do a write operation, add a little, little bit of delay, make it a bit slower. And that can slow down from like, doing three gigabytes per second to like uh, about 10 megabytes per second. Um, one useful way to slow down some stuff. Or you can, if you want to debug something that adds and removes file, like a temp files, you can say uh, unlink AT, which is the call below used by remove, so removing file from the file system. Uh, don't do anything and just say it went okay. So doing like rm temp foo, does not remove tempfu, the file still existed, because it injects this um, stop into the, your process. So this strace, ltrace family is useful, it's easy to use for simple tasks, for like debugging on the first level to see interaction with your process and the kernel. It usually doesn't require extra privileges, you can even run them as a normal user on your laptop or on the production server but it's also very slow and has a very limited view, and especially L-Trace does not work if you have a highly optimized system. Uh, so if you have a system that uses something called bind now linking, um, it doesn't work at all. Just uh, if you try to use L-Trace, it doesn't work, check for that, and yeah. So 
Let's get a bit lower. We have been on user space tracing. Let's see what's next. You can actually do something. Uh, the small kit, I like to peek into like electronics, took like several phones apart as a small kit, and if you do the same, look apart, pull apart what your operating system is doing, what your kernel is doing, even what your hardware is doing, and use low-level tracing. One low-level tracing tool allows you to like see what your file system drivers are doing, hardware drivers are doing, what your CPU is doing. Um, you can very efficiently um, trace the user space and do even operations like Let's show, let's list all files open by all processes during runtime. You can listen to events. And it's also a fun way to learn more about how actually kernel works. So there are tons of different data uh, sources. There are kernel probes and user space probes. There are different kind of events that are hooked up. Uh, the kernel events, high performance counters, power management unit, clock sources, and lots of lots of different other things. And user space programs like, for example, Python can define kernel probing points in user space. We have that for a couple of versions now. Uh, C Python, uh, PHP has that, Java has that, and other programs too. Uh, so with kernel probes, you can almost see almost every operation in the kernel does something that can be uh, probed. And the same is almost everything in user space applications. The only thing you can't probe are some static inline uh, function calls. The rest works. And there are tons and tons of different ones. Uh, here is uh, the proof program. Uh, it's a, okay, I can show you like 20 pages of that output and still not showing you all the different events you can see. Um, uh, currently, the kernel has about 2,000 different uh, kernel event uh, sources. And um, for example, you want to see what your wireless network card is doing while looking for a base station. This gives you the information while scanning for an access point. Uh, so different frequencies, like which Macs are involved, it's uh, intimidating how much information you can get from the kernel. So even if you're developing hardware devices, cool stuff. So there was a general introduction to kernel um, uh, tracing, now it gets a bit deeper, so different tuning we have. There's function trace, it's the oldest one. There's perf, there's the uh, BPF compiler collection, BPF tool chains, there's system tab. They let you write kernel space programs and user space, even a Python code that runs, not as Python code, but as interpreted code inside the kernel. And then lots of more tu uh, tooling for that. The first one uh, often used also by internal tooling is F-Trace, which you can use even on a system that does not boot at all. So if you can get the kernel in and can get a simple shell working, you can do uh, tracing and debugging your uh, boot process with that tooling. You'll just need a busy box shell, literally. And uh, so you have to, you can see, um, well, you have like issue, you have a file server, and want to debug how NFS works. You can just see which kind of calls your uh, process does when talking to an NFS server, or which kind of permission checks it does while talking to an NFS server. So these are any function called you see is kernel space uh, inside the kernel. The actual check is executed by the kernel. Uh, so if you open a file, you have, you have two log apps, which eventually check permissions uh, with the NFS driver. Um, Perf is one of the tooling for high performance computing um, profiling. Um, uh, um, yeah, you can do several things with additional priv uh, privileges, so as a normal user. For more advanced um, perf profiling, you need to have admin privileges or special permissions. So, one example is you want to see how what happens when you compile Python. So it's, I'm here in my working directory with a clean checkup of Python, I want to compile that, calling make, and I can see now what make is doing, like how many CPU instructions are executed. So compiling Python takes about 611 billion CPU instructions on my computer. Uh, and how many cache misses you have. So you have uh, optimization caches in your CPU. You want to see how often you miss a cache to optimize your algorithm to have more uh, cache hits. Caches are super, super fast. And every time you have a cache miss, then the, the CPU has to load stuff from lower level caches, even from memory or from disk. 
you want to optimize um, your algorithm that you don't have any cache misses. Or modern CPUs have something uh, called a turbo mode or um, like virtual hi uh, hyperthreading where you ha have like actually one CPU core that looks like two. Um, compiling Python uh, is about factor 1.7 turbo authorization. So the optimum would be two, uh, meaning one CPU core looks like more like two. Well, that's rather good. Um, you can also um, um, do the same as um, L-tracing. You can probe user space calls like glibc, uh, malloc, reloc, and free. Um, when you do that, you first have to create probe points. So you tell your operating system, your kernel, please uh, create some kind of measuring points where I measure how often I call uh, malloc, reloc, and free. And then you can actually run a program or attach a program. So here I have a program running already, attached to the PID 18154. And that does something. I end the, the tracing point at the end and see how often it calls the different functions, which is much faster. So you remember the old times, you're running plain Python, doing requests like half a second. With Outrise, it's almost three and a half seconds. And doing this perf um, approach is like, slightly uh, slower, but still okay. So if you want to have, uh, want to need to uh, profile your production server, it will slow down your production server a bit, but will not grind it to a halt. One famous example uh, for doing perf is also doing a flame graph or a call graph. So um, as I, um, you first have to record what you're doing so this is doing a call graph uh, called L LBR and runs this Python process and, and then report and annotate the output and finally report it, uh, convert it with some uh, Perl scripts uh, to SVG graphics. And that looks like that. So that's a flame graph uh, and the, uh, the height is uh, the depth of the function call stack. So every st function call calls like higher and the width is how many times spent. So uh, you see on this side here, uh, pi final is x. That's the shutdown of the Python interpreter. So shutting down the Python interpreter uh, is like 15% of the total runtime of your process, uh, just doing a request call. Um, you can do that a bit more. So that was showing too much information. And we just want to uh, profile only the request call. There are several ways. The easiest one. You get the PID, um, you attach the perf uh, command to your process that needs uh, special permissions or you need to run the same user. And then you run your code, like doing a request, and then you stop your perf call and do again this whole thing, like dumping it to the SVG graphic. And this will give you a much nicer graph, which only shows you the request call. And that area here, that's almost 40%, this is a function called, called x509 store load locations, which coming from OpenSSL. So doing a request call spends 40% of the total CPU time, not runtime, but CPU time on doing this kind of loading of your uh, root CAs from the file system and parsing them. So the actual TLS SSL connection uh, takes uh, way less time and CPU time, so CPU consumption, then just loading certificates. So creating a session first and requests will avoid that kind of issues. And just to stress it out, this is CPU time. This is not total runtime. So the delay or the time spent in waiting for network traffic going back and forth is not in that graphic, just CPU time. So even more advanced analysis of the kernel space is tools uh, to do tracing, profiling, and uh, um, handling data inside kernel space. One big issue with tracing is you get lots of lots of like millions of events or billions of events, and just transferring the information of all the events happening in the kernel space to user space takes a lot of time. You have an enormous overhead doing this processing in user space because you have first to get the information from the kernel inside user space. And if you want to process a lot, that's bad. 
The solution for that is yes, well, let's do pre-processing uh, of all this information in kernel space by writing kernel programs, but not as C models, but something called uh, a BPF or eBPF. These are um, uh, similar languages, uh, Berkeley, uh, Berkeley package filter, originally written for firewalling, where you run processes in the kernel uh, in kernel memory as a jitted sandbox process, which can help that. You don't have to write most of the tools yourself. There are different kind of tooling that lets you write something that looks a bit like C code and Python code mixed, which then get transpiled and injected into kernel. So, uh, BCC tooling has several things you can do. For example, check which kind of process consumes lots of file system activity. Or uh, TCP connections, <coughs> including the user that does the TCP connection. You can usually easily do a check for, um, uh, for activity, but it's very hard to just say, give me only activity for user 1000, which was my user running a Chrome process. So a Chrome browser. Or you can inject and intercept SSL traffic. So like this call will just uh, give me the plain output. So that hooks in before traffic gets encrypted or after traffic gets decrypted by the OpenSSL and just dumps it out for me. Uh, there are even a uh, level tool that work on top of BCC that lets you like listening to all activities. So if you would run that command that running, it will show the name, the pit, and the file opened by all processes on your system. Or uh, you wanna have, uh, see how often you do malloc calls. So this creates a histogram of all the malloc calls. So there's like 171 calls mallocing one byte, and there are one call that something between four and 128K bytes gives you a histogram of this. And it's just really this single line that does that. Um, well, very useful. System tab is a bit more complex, also more powerful. You can write C code, you can write um, eBPF code, and you can also do something called user space defined tracing points. So uh, Python has tracing point functions which you can hook in and do high performance high, uh, profiling. So every time a uh, model gets loaded or GCC is done or a line is executed, you get an event in kernel space. PHP has something like that and Java goes a bit overboard. They have over 500 different user space probing points in Java. Um, one issue is for a USDT in system tab, you have to disable secure boot. Otherwise you get something like loading of unsigned model is restricted. Different ways to do that, either reboot, disable that, or do a magic sys request to disable the lockdown of your kernel. Because system tag creates a kernel model and loads it into kernel space to patch the kernel in runtime. Just one example to see how you write a program that's called language called D. Um, you create a propine, mark it, connect it to an event handler for a process, and you do like put some timings and you have in the second one, so they usually come in pairs, so start, stop, or start, done, or a begin, end. And then I um, collect all the imports. And that will actually uh, print out something like that. So it's a, like a, a tree graph with different timings and show you which successful and uh, failing imports there were. So this whole system tracing with low-level tools, uh, you get lots of information which is the good thing. Bad thing is you get lots of information and you have to look for like the needle in the haystack. It's very fast, very efficient, and you can do all tons of things from hardware counters to hardware activity to uh, CPU activity, memory pressure in your system. Yeah. And there's a big learning curve uh, coming to that. And also if you do it wrong, you can what, turn your 64 core server easily into something that looks more like a Commodore 64. If you do something like uh, trace all kernel calls and get a backtrace, so a call stack for all the kernel functions, then the kernel will only do like emitting this, this tracing events and will, yeah, grind to a halt and you 
basically have to reboot your server. So be very careful if you do low-level tracing. Try it first on an on-production server and then replay the commands because I can tell you it can turn out bad. So summary. Um, so tracing uh, uh, our BPF trace are very useful tools for simple tasks. Uh, I like to use strace a lot for debugging like behavior of programs regarding files and networking. BCC comes with a very rich pre-built set of tools. So if you want to do some high performance uh, profiling, if BCC had us, has that built in as a small tool, highly useful. Uh, Perf is for optimizing algorithms on a very low level. So we have used Perf inside CPython to optimize and change like how we add longs and uh, so that's the uh, internal representation of like integers or uh, internal operations on floating point operations to like get like two, three CPU cycles off in special cases. Uh, so you can highly optimize your algorithm in that case. System tab lets you write more complex processes and uh, change so uh, you can do like histograms, you can do like, um, you can summarize your results in kernel space. You write something that looks a bit most like, like Python. So they use a Python with some embedded C uh, language and then it gets transpiled into C code and compiled to a kernel model. Um, F-tracing, um, probably don't use it directly. There's some tools that build on top of F-trace. And since you have to uh, disable several security features, for most of the things, and it can slow down your computer. One of the features is going to be this um, extended, enhanced Berkeley package filter language, which is a jitted language inside the kernel space, which also is kind of protected a bit, so it's harder to kill your server. Very useful resources are uh, first Brandon Gregg's website or any of Brandon uh, Gregg's uh, videos, they're super great. Um, some other is demonstrated in this D-Trace and System Tab, but D-Trace is the name of the original implementation for Solaris that was then re-implemented as System Tab. And you often heard D-Trace points are USDTs. A system Tab for beginners. There was a talk by Adam Freeman many years ago on Pi Bay. Um, so this System Tab integration was created by Facebook uh, to improve their production systems for uh, they're running Django for Instagram, and they wanted to optimize some of the cases. So they have a tool set, still hoping to get my hands on the tool set. And finally, the slides and any other slides I've given in the past, you find on my speaker deck. So there was two minutes before my end of time. So we have like seven minutes left for questions, and hopefully answers.